So if you clicked on this video, I appreciate it. And I'm just gonna say, you're the reason that I'm doing this stuff. I've been ho hoarding all this stuff, I guess is the right word, forever. And I've never really had a reason to dip out some of this stuff and work on it. I want to, but I'm always busy chasing things that customers need. You know, it's, I never catch a break. So let me show you what we're working with and kind of excited. It's uh, yeah. Sister Bones Top Cherokee. But let's take a walk around. Hood, it's obviously, I haven't washed it. It's just the way it's been covered up. Hood is good clear coat. Probably needs a good uh, buffing, you know, all that stuff. Header panel, let's see, bumpers, nice end cap. I did notice this earlier on a walk around and one little hairline crack. So, is this Jeep the most nicest one out there left? No. But is it nice to me? Absolutely. Fender, clear coat, it's a little hazy there, nothing in my head. I think I'm going to put a windshield in it. There's a crack right up there. Driver door, and it is the limited. We're going to get on that soon. But driver door's good, mirror's good. Roof, it's actually good. This door, I mean, just, I can probably buff that out. Clear coat's good on that. Quarter panel's good. The back hatch is kind of weird. So the bumper, obviously going to paint it. This little cover up piece got to paint it but this is weird i took the tag off if y'all can see i have no idea how this happened this is plastered in mud but it's been washed off there so i don't know that's kind of strange doesn't really change the story that end cap it's good that's this quarter panel's good there's some more mud it is weird it's like i got splattered in mud if it wouldn't run it or something but door's good one little buff Got to get out of there. And then one little pick. So, overall, fender, it's good. That's pretty, that, that's going to be a pretty nice Cherokee right there. And, of course, if you know me, it don't run. So, let's pop the hood. Inside is not in great shape. I know that. It's part of, I, would, I don't, I don't think you can really call this restoring. But, I mean, in a sense it is. I don't know. This Jeep is uh this jeep is a two a 99 it's 2023 so that makes it about what gosh 20 21 years old i'll do the math i don't know it's so but <coughs> inside is not perfect i know this but it is what it is seats tore back actually ain't that bad so those will get redone Headliner is obviously not good. That seat, I ain't even took that box out. But, limited. Got the limited panels, wood grain. Oh, it's popped. Oh, the two-wheel drive. I hate it, but that is what it is. We gotta fix that. So, I will be making it full drive. I haven't even took this stuff out. So, Nice door panel. Let's see if this even open. It's locked. What about that? Let's check this side out. Oh, what is all this? It's for the wrong ear model. It's for like a 91. Mm, not too bad. So like I said, it's a project. I'm not going, I'm on the fence of calling it a restore. Cause I mean, literally you could just put a motor in there and drive it. And like I said, it's two wheel drive. So it will be getting converted over. Let's pop the hood. Dang. This is like the first time I've ever seen it. Just like this. The head's already been taken off. Look at that. That's just a, simply a hole. It's still thick, so I don't know if it just simply got hot, melted it. Uh, that's got a, well, it's literally the only one, so I don't know. Maybe just a freak accident, injector failure. I don't know. It's not really like a race car motor or anything. New water pump. Uh, 
radiator's got to be replaced. So, heck yeah. It's a, I said it's going to be a job. So, got everything for full drive out there in the rain. I think at the moment all I'm doing is taking it apart. Keep up with everything. Let's get to taking stuff apart. Like it even matters, I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the lift. We'll do a tour underneath it, kind of check it out. Sure, it's not rusty Jeep at all, but check it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the transmission ready to come out. And I'll probably just swing all this out in one swing. Take off what I need. And I've got, I don't even think I told you, i got like a brand new motor to go in there. So something I built over the summer while it was so hot outside. Heck yeah, not one speck of rust at all. So I love my Southern Jeeps. Check it out. It's obviously dirty. Got to be washed. But you can see everything. Obviously, this will be coming out, but I've got some Efreeze crap there. Uh, no rust at all. Like I said, it's it's pretty dirty. Maybe they lived on a dirt road, but not a speck of rust. Transmission's decently clean. Not like any matters. Oh, that's so funny. When I went to get this, literally, the guy texts me while I think I sent my parents after. While he's on the way, somebody stole the converters. That's so funny, but it is what it is. You deal with it. Got some rock specks right there. That's kind of odd. Everything looks good. It's just dirty. The clean up. Still a whatever 20-something year old Cherokee. Still ain't figured that out. I ain't figured out the one mud tire. It's kind of random. Wheels look good. And all the wheels look pretty dang good. They clean it up, so. Oh, one little smash there. I don't know if you can tell, that's supposed to be straight. It's actually smashed kind of up that way. But not the end of the world. So from here forward, I'm going to just be taking stuff apart. So not really a how-to video. I'm going to get it took apart. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. Got everything out for the most part. We'll obviously clean all this stuff up. It ain't it ain't bad, but it could use a wash. So we got all that, got everything capped off. So I don't exactly know what I need. Obviously, I'm probably gonna need the wiring harness, maybe just a few sensors, pull that. So may take a few things off for now and see what my motor out there needs and Poor guy, I got the back hatch open. I think he thought he was just gonna do a little quick fix on this thing and move on. But why cut the wires? I don't get that. Something else I gotta fix, but uh, I think he was just hoping for a head gasket and uh, he gave up pretty quick. But, oh, that's crazy. You had to do that, but I just throw him in a bucket. Hey, that's exactly what I was talking about. If I've ever taught y'all how to do push rods, that's exactly what I was talking about. You don't have to do so. Why? They got this ugly valve cover. I don't know. This Jeep. What if the head's good? Got everything else. I don't know exactly what I need. Should be one of those projects. I got way more than I need to finish it. So, at this point, probably pop a few things off this engine. And then, probably give this a wash. Let it be drying. And I know y'all don't care, but it's uh, dark and rainy. So. The motor's out there, but I'm in here. So. Let's do the best I can with what I got. <clears throat> Hush. Check it out. <clears throat> that's so much better. Still, though, it could be a little better, but that's no hand washing. That's just pressure washing. So yeah, once we get a motor in there, it'll all look nice. Can't wait for this thing. It's going to be so slick. Got the underside. It looked pretty good. So heck yeah. Gotta get that rock off there. All right, we got my motor. And motor looks good, but there is no accessories at all. So a lot of that stuff's got to come off. And I thought when I took this, well, when I took the donor Jeep apart, I thought I kept everything. But I didn't. So literally, I have a drive shaft. 
I don't know where the rest of the crap went. I thought I had bolts, but that's for another project. What is this? No. Well, that's the bolt. I don't know. Regardless, I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna separate this. It's gotta come apart. So I need a flex plate. I need the cover. I need everything, all the bolts. But I got to thinking, I don't have an engine stand. They're all over there. So probably just gonna get this motor, set it over in there and start dressing it in the vehicle. Kind of a little more aggravating that way, but just I, I'm, I don't want to work on the floor. And then transfer case, if y'all do remember, it was in a bad wreck. I don't know if this flexed over, cracked this around there. So I was just gonna, went and got a case half. Got some motor mounts, all the thermostat, all that. Some super spark plugs, all the gaskets I need. But uh, I was just gonna put the case half on there, but pretty sure I was spinning it. Yeah, that's warped too. So I'm gonna see if I can find a shaft. And I know from y'all's standpoint, y'all are probably just like, why don't you just go grab a transfer case? Well, I could, but I sell them for like 350. So I can make that work and keep that money to somebody that don't wanna make stuff like that work. So yeah. Just ordered a radiator, it needs one of them. So, start putting stuff on the motor and getting it together and get it off in there. And hope it's good. I know who built it. Alright, kind of scary when everything's going too good, so... Got the motor, both to the transmission. I don't know. Don't have any torque converter bolts or anything in yet. And I can't remember if I said it, but I would rather fix that overhead than on the ground. So, leaving that. Got a pile of parts put back on the motor. Got some new $4 motor mounts. Oh yeah, that's one secret. Well, no, that ain't even really a secret now. Turn them upside down, you can lower the motor down. But got all this ready to accept everything uh floor jack when you come over in there you'll try to land it on the floor jack definitely better if you got two people i don't i'll figure it out on my own but that's about the best way i figured out you just go over in there hit the floor jack ride it out and then you jack it up and then you put a ratchet strap across it and then raise it up if you got a lift and then yeah keep on going from there so uh see if we can get this thing set off in there all right, let's see if we can get it in there without scratching everything up. This is so nasty. Nope, nope. Getting close. Yep, yep. My cherry picker's a little crooked and it wants to run into the tire. Do the best I can. Hit the tire. There we go. Transmission shifter. Again, two people would be nice, but that's what I got. Alright. See if we can push it over in there a little farther.
it's hard to tell, but like my floor is kind of er, angled for the drains in the floor. So this cherry picker the whole time is trying to pull back. So I may have to get a ratchet strap or a pull strap. So close. Got to take the little things off the motor mount. That started. I got that motor mount started, and then I'll put the nuts on bolts, and then raise it up. See if we can get this thing over here. I think the whole motor is actually like pointed over here. So I have to figure that out. Maybe hard to believe, but I about got all these nuts and bolts memorized. Raise it back up a little bit. Now I gotta kick the transmission over that. So close. Yes. So, so let me let me get those cinched up, and then we'll get a ratchet strap across there, and then lift it up. All right, I got the motor sitting in there, and like I said, I just threw a ratchet strap across here. Got to change that out, and then now I'll just get a transmission jack, pick up on this, and then put the cross member. And I kind of thought twice about it because I still got to do this, so uh, I'll make sure and get that hard bolt out, that odd size one. Man, shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna. Just go ahead and raise everything up. So, oh, that's the one thing. We're doing a full-wheel drive swap. I forgot about that. So, this is where it goes, obviously. Normally, I would just uh, grind this off, stick that plate up there, and then put tack welds out here, cool them off so they don't melt the carpet. But I'm going to try to do this in the right, so we won't get that on the day, but I'm going to do that the right way. Like I said, I was... The guy was supposed to gather everything up I needed for a full dry swap, but he did a terrible job. I gotta go find everything else myself. All right, just kind of a little update. This would take somebody that didn't know Cherokees like I do quite a long time. Got all the motor mounts in there. Make sure I do everything right on this one. Got all the stuff hung up there. I realize I don't have an oil filter adapter, so gotta steal that one off the other one. Crank sensor up there, hopes it's good. Gotta tighten these bolts up there. Be sure and put the dust cover on. Poor transmission's ugly, but oh well, it'll do the job. So I got all this bolted up, and I believe, I believe I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. So went out back where I do slip yoke eliminators, I always end up with a bunch of shafts. So got a shaft, got that cover. So just a matter of taking it apart, cleaning everything up, putting it back together. Got some bolts to go. Then gotta let it down and start on some top stuff and i got the strangest feeling the fuel pump's gonna be out just like the rest of them but i got a radiator ordered so even if it cranks up i'm not driving it immediately just uh just some busy work Woo -wee. what a mess <clears throat> i think we're on the home stretch but let's see i done threw one shaft away went and got another shaft this warp come out of a tj so we'll figure uh i noticed this was caved in a little hard to turn so this piece here blew out the back so it pushed the bearing through there so i got them in the parts washer over there they was a little i guess you call it oxidized from being outside in my junky minivan so i'm gonna lower back down do a little clean out of the back and uh start putting some stuff together on the top side all right a little teaching segment here got it on tdc on the compression stroke if you can't figure that out i'm sure there's plenty of googleable things that work and then this that little flat thing right there there's a hole right to that side of it and then if you look straight down there's a alignment key in there so, well and then uh let's see should be that hole i believe maybe that one 
one, one of those are for the 2.5. So that's 4.0 and I think that's the 2.5. And I was getting the exhaust on. And we all know that the 4.0 is known for cracking right there. If you just see, I welded all the way around the crack and welded these together around there. So yeah. I know somebody will say that it don't flex properly or something. I'm not saying I don't disagree with you, but the fact that I've been doing it for like 20 years that way, and they all seem to be still working, kind of prove the point yourself, I guess would be the word. So, I'm gonna keep on putting stuff together. Sure, I gotta put a fuel pump in later. Just keep plugging away. All right, just a little mild update. I was like, for what I got in this thing or what it's gonna be worth, honestly. I went ahead and got some new plug wires, new hose, stuff like that. Had a decent looking belt. Oh, I gotta put the crappy wiring harness back on there, but here's what it is. When got one of these, I'm gonna try to clean that before I put it on there, cause that is gonna look, maybe some of this will clean up. But got the plug wires, not very neatly organized, but best I can do. So yeah, I think I'm gonna raise it back up, finish the transfer case out. I may be fired up today if the fuel pump's not bad. You know, Y'all don't see the days separating these videos, but it's Friday before Thanksgiving, so it's actually Wednesday. Kind of strange. I'm pretty sure I'm closer than I realized, especially on the downside. I think everything's cinched up. Got my exhaust. Wish it didn't look like that, but it just is what it is. Transfer case is all there. Gotta get a piece of exhaust from there to there. Obviously, I wanna hear it run first. I'm gonna lower it back down. Just got a few more things. I might just crank it with that radiator. I don't know, I'm still waiting on my one I ordered, so. Just hope the fuel pump's good. I don't have to put a fuel pump in there. I don't know how long she's been sitting, honestly. I can't believe I'm here. I know this don't mean crap to y'all, but like I said, I've had this Jeep. I've had lots of Jeeps for years, and I just have no, I haven't made time to do anything with them, so they just sit. It's so depressing to buy stuff like this, and I mean, I know when I get done with it, it's probably gonna sit more, but the fact that I've actually got it running, it's in tip top shape, will be, that's just so awesome. I can't, that's so crazy, thank y'all. So, got everything put on. I still need my new radiator, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna leave it right there. Uh, oh, I'm sure the fuel pump's out, but let's stick a battery on it. And cross our fingers that the fuel pump is not out. I'm tired of doing fuel pumps. Y'all can't tell, I went and bought like 10 fuel pumps, like 25 socks, inside sock, strainer, whatever you call it. Every friggin' Jeep I drag out needs a fuel pump or something to do with ethanol. It's frustrating, so I just went and bought a bunch of stuff. All right, give me a second. All right, let's see if the fuel pump's good. Please be good, please be good. Man, I didn't want to do a fuel pump. So, unless something's wrong, it's fixing to fire up. No way. No way. I'm sure the gas is old. Maybe it'll run. Oh! Come on. All right, I know I've still got a lot of stuff. I still got to put the dry chef and all that in. I just want to see. And I got to do the exhaust, but I'm just curious. Depart. Gas lights on. I like the starter to weak. I should have read his note on the box said a starter issue. Come on, man. Jack never. It's that close to firing up. Let's see if I can hit it with a hammer or something. Oh, now it works wonderful. Come on.
coughing back in the intake, so I'm gonna say lifters probably ain't uh, super happy. <laughs> Let me get a muffler on it. Hey, yeah, hell, yeah. Can't cut, sorry. I was going to get some gas. I don't know if y'all can hear it. Listen real carefully. I think the gas is so old it's pinging. It's not good. Or my motor has so much compression. I bet that's what it is. My my motors have more compression because they're, they're no gas cow. Wonder where I'll find a gas cow. We'll get some gas and take her down the road. Spitting gas back on me. So it's obviously getting dark, you can tell, and it's full of gas. And right there's the headlights laying in the back of the Jeep. Oh, it's dark. Why is it like spitting gas? Something probably old or something. Gas had never come up. What I probably do is just pump all this gas out and then put in 10 gallons and see if the fuel hand moves, but at least to my worries right now. I don't even know if this transmission's good. I know the guy that sold it to me said it was good, but never know about them. Never had a Cherokee with this thing. It's EJ's and it works. Safety first. No headlights in the dark, but safety first. It's just rattling. I know y'all probably can't hear it, but the whole time it's just sounds like pitter patter. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I got a wire the speed on here. The one thing two wheel drive to four wheel drive conversion is you gotta extend the speedometer. So that was a little bit of work I didn't want to fool with today. I'm hoping because the speedometer does not work is why I don't have overdrive. Pretty sure it has to have speed signal to know to lock it. Well, yeah, because that's probably a safety feature for lockup, I think. No, it's locked up now. Oh, no. Runs good, got good power. Be brand new motor. Stop and tell my brother it runs. It rides good. Automatic windows work. So I bet he's standing right there. Can't even hear me pull up. Oh man, no horns. Am I on TV? Something like that. What are you doing? It runs. It smells like new motor. I love I love that smell. It's got old gas, it goes clank, 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 clank. Okay, have fun. Huge success, huge. Can't wait to get this in on the road, get everything squared away. So, just a work in progress, but like I always say, well, like I said in the first video, I, if you watch this far, I really appreciate it. It's not really necessarily the money, it's just the fact that I feel like I'm doing these not as by myself as I would be doing them completely by myself. I hope y'all enjoy. I know I'm not perfect at this. I hope you get better six months in, whatever. So, heck yeah, appreciate it. Maybe next time we'll do some full drive stuff. Believe it or not, this whole video took place across two days. So that's a that's a lot of work to get done for a vehicle that don't even run. New motor, crate motor. Swap the, well, I still gotta do a front end swap, but not too bad. 